Hey everyone, it's Leslie from Wild Wild Vinyl. I wanted to come to you today and do a quick tutorial on how to press garden flags. The very first thing is to print out your image. As you can see, here's my, my sublimation print. It is mirrored. You will need to mirror these. Um, and then make sure you have your substrate ready. This is just an 11 by 15 garden flag. I kind of wanted to mix it up and do a burlap feel to it this time. So this one I got off of Nashville Wholesale Wholesalers. I will attach the link, but there are a number of substrate blank sub providers. If you will look in the announcement section, I have listed my preferred providers. These are people that I have worked with and purchased from, so I know that they have offered good quality products, their customer service is excellent, and their shipping time is fast. So if you look at that, I would appreciate it. Um, it is important with any of your fabric type substrates to make sure that you pre-press. The fabric will hold on to moisture. So I usually will press for about 15 seconds. My heat press is set for between 380 and 385. It is also very important for you to know your equipment. Some of the heat presses run a little bit hot, some of them run cooler. It is the same with convection ovens for doing your tumblers. So make sure that you know your equipment. Get a, get a heat gun to make sure that it is that the platen is heating, heating evenly for the best effect. So when I do my garden flags, you need to make sure, and it's super hot, you need to make sure that you're doing the top at the top. I have made that mistake a couple times and it's no fun to have to redo them for that mistake. So I line it up and then I flip it over. You will need a top and a bottom blowout sheet as always protect your platen and your mat underneath and then I'm going to press for 60 seconds one thing to keep in mind you do not ever want to reuse this butcher paper because you'll get ghosting onto your next project um, you can buy Lots of packing paper people use. I'm kind of spoiled, I guess, and a little bit picky. And so I buy a bundle of this that comes in 250 sheets, and I think it's like $15 at Walmart. Um, but you will wanna change that every single time. The other thing that I get asked about a lot is using Teflon sheets like we do when we do heat heat transfer vinyl. You do not want to do that with sublimation. It does hang on to the moisture and it can make your edges fuzzy. So you don't want to use Teflon sheets. Mm -hmm. You also want to make sure that you are um, not using, I've had people that have asked me why they're getting ghosting, but it's because they're using the same Teflon sheet. So it's the same idea. You do not want to be reusing your blowout sheet. If you can see this right here, you can see how much ink is picked up onto the blowout sheet and all of that will transfer to another project. So you just don't want to use it. So you can see how pretty that pressed. That would have pressed prettier if I had moved, had moved the, or cut off the tag, but you can see how beautiful that presses. It is a good thing that this one's just for me. Like I said, I have done very well with garden flags. I offer them every year for all seasons, and I've done very, very well with them. One idea I've had and I've done well with is I've done a garden flag of the month club and people will join. Um, I charge $15 for a garden flag if they're part of the group, part of the club. 
and um, they get one each month. If they decide they want more than one flag, then it's ten dollars. Um, it's ten dollars for the extra flags. So as you can see, I'm doing my other side now. I want to line up anything that you, any lines that you have, that is gonna be a good guide for you to be able to line up your front and back sections. So you can see over here, my lines match up, over here they match up, over here they match up, and over here they match up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing and just flip it over. and put a piece of blow out paper over the top and do another 60 seconds. Another thing that I've been asked frequently about lately is if you have a smaller press. I have a clamshell, which I'm using now. I also have a swing away 16 by 20. This is a 16 by 24, but I have done big projects on a 15 by 15. If you will refer to the tutorial section, I have done a doormat using a piece of, that was a piece of particle board, but I also on some stuff, for instance, if I have a garden flag that was bigger that I needed to move around, I have used like six, six pieces of blowout paper underneath. It just allows you to move, to slide it over without disrupting your image. If it's a if it's a smaller, larger project, if that makes sense. If it's something like a doormat, I would get a very thin piece of you could use something that's sturdy enough that it's not going to allow it to bend because then you are going to get ghosting. So a thick enough, sturdy enough piece of cardboard will work as well as a very thin piece of MDF board. The thing about these clamshells, if you have a clamshell, you will notice that all of your pressure is toward the back of the press. So you have to be careful um, if you're using a board that's very thick because you will get all the pressure at the back and then you'll get uneven pressure in the front and your image won't be clear you'll not get the, the proper amount of ink traps you would otherwise. So that's the thing to keep in mind with a clamshell. If you have a swing away, then you can use a thicker piece of board because you can adjust the pressure and you're gonna get more even pressure. So those are the things to keep in mind. So here is my finished project. You can see how pretty that pressed. They are very easy to do, not very time consuming, and so there is a really good profit margin on these. I hope you all have a great day.